Hey guys, it's uh, Ryan here with dpmarketing.services. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, if you've never seen our videos before, uh, we do um, digital marketing for plumbing and HVAC contractors throughout the US and Canada. And on these uh, sort of videos, we try to come at you with uh, just tips and tricks um, to help you grow your business. Sometimes it's about marketing, sometimes it's about understanding different uh, business aspects. Um, and today's gonna be one of those. So. Uh, in a lot of the clients that we work with and a lot of the markets and on various Facebook groups, um, a lot there's a lot of conversation about, you know, how do you stand out? And there's a lot of people talking about, well, you should wrap your vans and you should do this and do that. Uh, and all those are fine and good, right? This isn't about, uh, this video necessarily isn't about differentiating. What this video is really about is helping you as the owner or manager of a plumbing or HVAC shop understand the different forces that are at play in your business that you always have to combat against. Um, sometimes these are things that um, you probably may know and they sound really obvious. And sometimes these are things that um, you haven't really thought about it in this sort of category. So um, several years ago, there was a business strategist named Michael Porter, who actually, he wrote a lot of different sort of ideas that were very, very good ideas. Um, and one of them is what we now call the Porter's Five Forces. Um, if you studied business in college or uh, in any sort of graduate level, this is something you would have talked about. It's a little bit academic, but the more you understand these five forces, the better you can kind of position your business to grow in your specific market and in your specific uh, economy. So here's how this works. Um, you have five forces. A couple of these you're gonna know and you go like, ah, got it. But a couple of these you might not think about. The more you think about them and understand them, the better you, your company is positioned, okay? So option, uh, the first force that your company has, all companies have, is da -da -da, competitive rivalry or competition, right? Please don't make fun of my handwriting. Um, here, let me scoot over so you can see it. Um, so the competitive rivalry is the first of the five forces. And you know this, right? This is your competition. This is the other guys you compete against on Google or Facebook or whatever. These are the competitors that um, are also doing your same ser service in your same service area. Uh, they create a force. It's a force because if uh, your pricing is three times as much as their pricing, that's a force for you. Uh, if it's if they have a larger staff than yours, that's a force. Anything that the competitors in your market space do, change, think, offer customers becomes a force that your business has to be able to adapt at some level. Um, and it can be from how you present uh, your service offerings, how you do your sales process, how you wrap your vans. It really can be any number of things. But your competition will is a force that you have to understand and you have to respond to. Another one is new entries. New entries. So again, don't make fun of my handwriting. New entries is exactly what it sounds like. So in the United States, there's just under half a million plumbers and half a million HVAC companies. Every year, about 20% go out of business in some capacity. But that also means every year, about 20% come into the market on a new capacity. If you're watching this, you did this, right? You started at one shop, you grew up, you maybe maxed out on your commission structure and you decided, I'm gonna go and do this myself. New entries into a market are um, a real threat because they have, in some cases, all the training you have. And they might have a lower overhead than you so they can operate more cost efficiently. They might not have all the advantages that you have or a more established company has, but the fact that new companies can enter a market space so quickly uh, is something you always have to consider. Now, this is true not just for a company starting off from not existing to existing, but this could be true where if a company that's in another market all of a sudden becomes a newer market now. Uh, and so we've, we've talked with clients before who they're very successful in like a smaller, softer market. As soon as they can demonstrate that there's enough money to be made there, it catches everybody's attention and all the competitors want to start coming in. So new entries coming into an existing market that haven't been there or new, new entries being developed that have never been before in existence. This is something else you have to keep an eye on because this is always going to be a pressure for your business. 
another one you have to think about, and this again is something you face every day and you go through a lot of sales training for, is uh, your customer's buying power. Buying power. So <clears throat> here's what this means. Your customer, uh, they have the ability with the almighty dollar that's in their pocket to influence your business. They're able to influence how much they're willing to pay, what sort of services they want to do. Um, do they want to buy, so if you do like commercial, do they want to do a lot of services over a large territory, but at a very low margin each? If you're doing residential, like how can you craft that out? But understanding the influence that your customer has over your business and over the industry at large in your area is a really important factor. So there's a lot of things that will go into understanding that. But basically, uh, this is going to be important if you are uh, mainly do commercial. If you do, uh, you'll need to understand a lot of how your customers uh, spend money, how they prefer to spend money, how they operate, how do they buy, how frequency do they buy, uh, what sort of orders are they looking for. Uh, but also things like just residential customers. Theoretically, this particular thing won't apply to a B2C category, but the basic premise is still the same. If your customers aren't willing to pay for your services or they're willing to pay less than what you think your services are worth, it will have an impact on your business. Another one uh, that you guys probably all noticed at the beginning of the year, um, if you were part of the price hikes from your supply houses, is supplier power. And supplier power is exactly what it sounds like. They, Your business depends on your ability to get supplies and parts for you to do your job at a price that your business can sustain. Now, these things are opposites, right? If the supplier power price goes up, if they start saying, hey, all of a sudden the parts that you're getting from us are now 25% more, but your customers are saying, we're not going to pay 25% more. In fact, we want to pay 25% less. You have a problem. These things are opposite ends of the spectrum and they create a tension for your business you have to figure out how to manage. The last thing on this list is threat of substitution. So substitution, like categorically, is going to be anything a customer can do to solve their problem that isn't directly involving one of your competitors. So in this sort of case, it could be people like DIYing their stuff from YouTube. Right? They're still solving their immediate problem, but they're not using a competitor to do it. They're not uh, going out to a new entry to do it. They're just going to find another way to solve their problem. Um, it's going to be more important the lesser technical and the lesser difficulty of the skill. So if it sums into like somebody replacing their own thermostat, no big deal. They can probably do that. For some people, swapping out a garbage disposal may or may not be in the substitution category. But when you go into like repiping a bathroom, the likelihood that somebody's going to be able to substitute that themselves is pretty low. But in all these categories, right? New entry, buying power, substitution, supplier power, and competition, these are five distinct forces that absolutely have a massive impact on how your business is structured and the way you need to make decisions. What this means is you can't set your business on autopilot make decisions on January 1, and then not evaluate again until the next January 1. Because guess what? All of these five things are changing throughout the year. Supplier houses are changing. New companies are coming in the market. Customers are finding other ways to solve their need. Uh, the economy could go up or down, makes customers more or less likely to spend money. All these things are constantly changing, and they constantly need to be evaluated. But the more you can understand the kind of the concept of these five forces, the more you can kind of structure your business in a way where you can make smart, healthy, wise decisions that really stand you out and have you have long-term success. So it's a little bit of an academic video this time, uh, but it, it's not always as simple as be cheaper than the other guy or be better than the other guy or just outwork the other guy. As you can see, there's, there's actually several things you have to keep in mind to make sure that your business as a whole can build an engine that will help you have long-term sustaining growth, revenue, build your own personal wealth, build the wealth of your team, and everybody's happy. 
Uh, if you ignore any one of these, it could be catastrophic. But uh, yeah, curious to know what you think on this video. Um, as always, guys, um, follow us on Facebook, subscribe on YouTube, leave a comment below. Uh, would be uh, loving to hear your thoughts. All right, guys, hang out, uh, stay safe, and we'll see you next time.